Hey guys, do you have hundreds of brushes and have a hard time choosing the right brush? Well, hopefully I can help you out. I'm an artist and I paint portraits like the one that you see right now. A lot of people ask me this question. How do you choose your brushes for your paintings? So I made this video to answer this question. There's two properties to consider when choosing the right brush. First one is sharpness and the second one is texture. So let me explain that visually. The first brush is soft, the second one is sharp and the third one has medium sharpness, somewhere in between the two. So let's move on to texture. The first brush has a lot of texture, the second one has some and the last one has none. Okay, so we're just gonna use those two properties, sharpness and texture, to pick our brushes. The first brush we need to pick is for sketching. This stage is for getting the general shapes correct and placing the portrait nicely on the canvas. For this stage, I use a brush with medium sharpness and some texture. Okay, so let me explain that better. I'll be drawing the same thing in one minute using four different brushes. The fourth brush that I'll be using will be my favorite sketching brush and it's the one that I use for this painting. The purpose for this exercise is to compare sketches from different brushes so we can identify the advantages of using this brush. Number one is a soft brush with no texture. You can see the shapes aren't really defined. Number two is a sharp brush with no texture. You can see the shapes are much more defined, which is good. But the problem with this one is that we can see those overlaps happening and it's kind of distracting. Also, it doesn't have any texture and for the sketching stage, we want to have some kind of texture. Number three is a sharp brush, again like number two, but with a lot of texture. I think there's too much texture and it's kind of distracting for the sketching stage. The fourth one is my favorite sketching brush. The brush has medium sharpness and it's sharper than number one but softer than number two or three. It has less texture than number three but more than number one or two. So it's somewhere between all these brushes. It's my favorite. It's very intuitive. It's almost like drawing with a pencil or a piece of charcoal. It's really easy to build tones. We don't see those overlaps happening like we saw in number two. And we don't have too much texture unlike number three and that could get in the way. So for the sketching stage, try to pick a brush, something like this. A brush with medium sharpness and with some texture. I'm using my favorite sketching brush like I demonstrated. I'm just quickly sketching away, using thin lines as well, building tones. It's like drawing with charcoal. It's very intuitive. It has some texture, so that's good. Okay, so let's move on to the next stage, which is establishing the general tones. So for this stage, we establish the general tone, the atmosphere of the painting. For this step, I use the brush that is sharp and also with a lot of texture. So let me explain it better. I'm gonna draw squares using four different brushes, just like last time. The third brush that I'll be using will be my favorite brush for establishing the general tone and the atmosphere. The purpose for this exercise is to compare results from different brushes so we can know the advantages of choosing brush number three. The first one is a soft brush and the second one is a sharp brush. There are some distracting overlaps happening which is not that good. And the edges are not that sharp. Number three is my favorite one for this stage and this is the brush that I used. It has a lot of texture so that's good and also it's very sharp so we can accurately establish the tone onto the sketch. Number four is the brush that we use for the sketch. It's a little bit too soft for this stage and it doesn't have enough texture. The texture is more interesting in number three. So for this stage, try to pick a brush that performs like number three. So that's a brush that is sharp with a lot of texture. I'm using my favorite brush like I demonstrated establishing the general tones and the atmosphere of the painting. So, the next stage is painting the hair. In this stage, we're trying to make the hair look like hair by adding those individual strands or lines representing the hair. 
However, instead of painting them one by one, we just let the brush do the work for us. The brush that I used here is sharp and also soft and has a lot of texture. So that doesn't really make sense, so let me try to explain that better. So here's the brush that I use for painting the hair. Depending on the way we use the brush, we can make it either soft or sharp. If we use it like this, we can represent the individual strands of hair using these sharp lines. Whereas if we, if we use it like this, that's just one stroke, we can create soft shapes. So why is this useful? Well, it's useful because if we just keep going like this, it becomes too much and we want some kind of variety. So the advantage of using this brush is that we can mix things up and we can draw sharp lines and also soft shapes. So for painting the hair, try to pick a brush or brushes that has a lot of texture and also a brush that creates these sharp lines which represents the individual strands of hair. I'm using my favorite brush like I demonstrated, painting the hair and letting the brush do most of the work. So the next step is painting the skin tone. So at this stage, we're trying to get the tones correct while adding subtle organic textures. So let me show you the brush that I use for painting the skin tone. The brush I use for the skin tone is this one. It's the same brush I use for the sketching stage. It's easy to build tones and transitions. Using this brush, I can't make the tone perfectly even and smooth. And that's a good thing, and I'll show you what I mean. The image on our right is after adding skin tone. The imperfection adds character and it looks nice and organic. The subtle texture is also good. If we use the same brush for the hair, that's going to be too much texture for the skin. But we also don't want to make it super smooth and artificial. We want something in between. So for painting the skin, I would pick a brush like the one I showed you, with medium sharpness and with some texture. You can see I'm using my favorite brush to add skin tone. Getting the subtle tones and adding a nice organic texture to the skin. So this brings us to the next step, the blending stage. So for this stage, we blend the painting. It's like using our finger to smudge our drawings to create an interesting variety of texture and edge quality. I use a soft round brush, but I don't use the brush tool. Instead, I use the blender brush tool. So let me show you what that is. So we can use the blender brush like we use our finger to smudge graphite or charcoal. It's really good for balancing the texture and also at the same time making the edges softer. In a painting, we don't want to make everything smooth, but also we don't want to have everything super textured. So we want something in between the two, a balance. So this is where the blender brush comes in. So for this stage, choosing a brush is easy. We just use a soft rounded brush with no texture. Okay, so let's compare the before and after the blending. The image on our right is after the blending. The texture is looking balanced. Also, we created really nice soft edges. It's already looking better, so that's good. So this brings us to the last stage, adding those final touches. At this stage, we want to add in those small details in defined shapes using sharp edges. For this stage, I use a brush that is sharp without much texture. So let me show you the brush that I used. I use this brush for the finishing touches. We can see the brush is sharp and also it has a little bit of texture. We can also see the distracting overlaps happening, which is not that good. So to avoid this problem, we can try to use the eyedropper tool to pick specific colors and to use opaque paint. So that's applying more pressure to the tablet. So for this stage, choose a brush that performs like this one, a brush which is sharp and with a little bit of texture. So let's compare the before and after images to see what we can achieve using this brush. The image on our left is before the addition of final touches. As we can see, we haven't changed the big tones or the big shapes and also the amount of texture, it's all pretty much the same. In fact, most of the painting is left as it was. I just added some sharp edges and small details. For example, if we just look at the mouth, the highlighter areas are where I used a sharp brush to sharpen the edges and to define shapes. 
I made sure not to sharpen everything so we can have a variety. This variety of edge quality, so that's everything from lost edges to sharp edges, is what makes the drawing nice and successful. That's pretty much done. Finishing the hair is pretty much the same process. We start by blending and then adding bits of sharp lines representing isolated strands of hair. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys found this useful. Um, you can check out the brush set that I use in the description if you guys are interested. And I also share real-time painting videos if you guys want to watch that as well. So thanks again and see you next time.